How you doing? This is George Sender, the guy from Pittsburgh. And of course, tonight at 7, I will be on the Gabcast as the sole host. <clears throat> and I'm sure that it will be a raucous hour, however long the Gabcast is. I never did pay attention to how long it runs. I got enough trouble figuring out where it is. <laughs> well, anyway, big news today in Trump Talk. First of all, Obama limits strikes on ISIS training camps. Yeah, Commandant Woods strikes again, folks. He said earlier this week the U.S.-led military coalition is hitting Islamic State targets harder than ever. The critics say not enough of these hits are striking training camps that are churning out a thousand militant fighters every month. And the military has been kept attacking the camps. Officials complain because many are lo located near residential and population centers and strikes should produce casualties among civilians and, as well. In the meantime, Donald Trump, appearing on MSNBC's Scarborough, said Putin is a leader, unlike Obama. Trump said, I think he's a strong leader. Trump told MSNBC's Morning Joe program about Putin's stunning host, Joe Starborough. He's a powerful leader. Yeah, he is. He's not a wimp and a wuss. He's going after ISIS. Obama, oh, we might have civilian casualties. So we got to we gotta not have, um, we got to not go after ISIS. We might hurt some kids and women. Might hurt somebody's uh, donkey or burrow or, or beloved goat. And Trump said, I think he's up in the 80s. You see where Obama's up in the, in the down in the 30s and 40s, and he's up in the 80s. I don't know who does the polls. Maybe he does the polls. They're done by American companies, actually, I think. And Thursday, Putin hailed Trump as the absolute leader in the and praise and talk and building. So, Trump said, when people call you brilliant, it's always good, especially when the person heads up Russia. Scarbo pointed out, Putin is a person who also kills journalists, political opponents, and evades countries. Obviously, that would be a concern, would it not? Well, I'm going to, before I go on to the next comment, uh, they always do this. They come up with this comment, it's like, how do you, do you still beat your wife? And what the hell is the guy supposed to answer? Now, I just read a story where a Russian female journalist, very anti-Putin, very anti the Chechen war, was killed in the stairs of her apartment. And a lot of people thought, oh, Putin did it. Putin ordered it. They were the whole trial. And you know what it was? Chechnyans and, a, and former FSB officers. They had a trial. They were declared not guilty. The Supreme Court ordered them retried. They were found guilty and went to prison. And you know what? Putin didn't have a hand in it. There were intimations that a Russian state official had something to do with it, but no one said Putin did it. Putin did it. So, unless you find Putin standing there with a Makarov in his hand, and that's what killed the woman, a Makarov, which is the handgun, for you folks on Belgab, uh, Putin hasn't killed anybody as far as many I, I can find out. Of course, I expect any minute that um, the uh, internet troll and uh, haranger um, Casio will uh, try to refute me on that. I don't really give a damn what Casio says. Um, Get back to Trump. He replied, there's a lot of killing going on in the world. And then accused of Tarbro asking him something different. I think our country has plenty of killing also, Joe. Trump told him there's a lot of stupidity going on in the world right now, Joe. A lot of killing going on. A lot of stupidity. And that's the way it is. You didn't ask me that question. You asked me a different question. That's fine. That's typical of liberal media. Ask a question that's ad hominem. Totally off the topic. Trump pushed back questions on Putin's role in Ukraine and the Crimea. He criticized Germany and other near countries should not be more involved in the threat of Putin spreading his hold. 
I have friends from Ukraine. Trump said they're fantastic people. And they see these countries not engaged. We're totally engaged. I asked himself, here's this big monstrous company, country Germany. They hardly speak up. They accept as oil and gas and lots of other things. And here we are fighting like hell. Well, there's a reason uh, Germany, not more involved, people are afraid of Germany. They haven't forgot two world wars and East Russia moving into France in 1870. So Germany has to probably move on tiptoes anytime they do anything military. They, people say they're Nazis. Oh, by the way, uh, or we'll accuse them of being Nazis all over again, or neo-Nazis. This thing about Trump being a Nazi, he wants to put Muslims in camps, is ridiculous. But let's look at the real Nazis here. It's ISIS. They just did the same thing that Hitler did. They put to death a bunch of autistic and uh, mentally challenged children. And they're now telling the children in their camps to cut the head off their dolls. Behead their dolls. What kind of sick son of a bitches tell their little kids to kill their dollies? This is the kind of mentality we got. Now, you know, I'm quite sure that we get Trump as president, and I'm very sure we're going to get Trump as president, despite what some I read on another page that only one guy had said he'll get the nomination. One guy said maybe. But they're all so afraid to say what their biggest fear is. Trump presidency. President Trump. I don't think Trump's going to say, oh, we can't bomb the kids. He might kill the little children. He might kill the, the wives of ISIS members. Wives of Irish members, ISIS members know everything that's going on. We saw that in San Bernardino and indicted the guy today. And he admitted they were planning to go into cafeterias at universities and drop pipe bombs to the second floor and kill people while they were eating their lunch. This is the kind of enemy we got to fight. An enemy that the mentality hasn't changed since 1200, maybe 1100. And Trump's right. We should bomb these bastards back to the Stone Age. Because that's where their mentality belongs. And don't worry about collateral damage. Like Hitler said, let the Hun worry about that. I mean, not Hitler, sorry, Patton. Excuse me, I got Hitler on the brain here. Makes me so damn mad when I compare somebody to Hitler. I've been compared to Hitler because I'm against illegal immigration. My mother lived in Nazi Germany. She met Hitler in 1940. She married a member of the Wehrmacht who was lost in the Russian front. He died for his country. He wasn't lost. They didn't lose him. He was killed. Serving Wehrmacht officer. Now, you may not like the Wehrmacht. But he was in the German army. Just like anybody else's army, when they gave him orders to go, he went. I, I, I never met the man. He died, died years before I was born. I know my mother loved him deeply. She never got over his death. Not because he was in the member of Wehrmacht, because she was in love with the man. And she met my father and fell in love with him. Trump, going back to Trump, he says, I see us getting out of Ukraine. I'd like to see enthusiasm from the people directly affected. Now, Obama's accusing of, by, uh, accused by many of bleeding from behind. You got that right. Trump says he didn't consider stepping back in the same way. I want to see our country built, rebuilt again. Our country is falling apart, frankly. Our old country is a mess. You're asking me a question. There's a lot of things I, we can do, but one of the things I want to do is make America great again. U.S. needs to rebuild his military. That doesn't mean we have to use it. Now, I don't know if that's an isolationist statement or not. Trump says also in the show, Russia could be a big asset to our country. And I think that's the way it's going to be. They're a powerful nation. They have a big military base and force. There can be a lot of good things happening with Russia. We get along well and they respect us. 
And the problem is, they don't respect Barack Obama. Putin does not like Obama, Trump said, and the feelings are mutual. As a person who does deals all the time, it's all about people. Everything's about people. I watched those two sitting in two chairs, looking at each other and saying, wow, that's bad chemistry. Yeah, it's also bad karma. Anybody that bomb, wants to bomb ISIS, join the line, said Trump. I'm all for you. And he said, Russia can be a positive force with respect. Praising Putin for bombing ISIS after starting up bombing other targets in Syria. Well, we don't see that with Barack Obama. He ain't going to want to bomb anybody unless they're uh, 50 miles outside of town on a Toyota pickup. And another thing. One of our... Um, Federal uh, intelligence agencies for Congress this week said that we got thousands of people coming to this country, a lot of them Muslims, who come here on visas and disappear. And they can't be found. And they said any given time during the year, 500,000 of them come in here and disappear. We got 500,000 potential terrorists. Nobody knows where the hell they are. Maybe they start looking at Home Depot where they're buying pipe. Once you get past all the Mexicans trying to get a, a landscaping job. And that's not an anti-Mexican comment. You dri comment, you drive to any Home Depot. There's eight, nine, ten out there. You go to U-Haul on Monument Boulevard in Concord. There's five, six, seven Mexicans standing there all day trying to ask people for help if they want help hauling their stuff. You all's got a big sign, don't hire the people standing there. Call our endorsed company. And one time Kathy and I needed to move her sofa bed upstairs. It would have been up a flight of stairs. We could have gotten it in after there, afterwards. We saw three Mexicans stand by the 7-Eleven. They've been out there for hours. They said, hey, we'll pay you 20 bucks a piece. Help us carry the sofa bed upstairs. Oh, no, we cannot do that. See, they accused me of being lazy. Kat and I found a guy in the building. He and another guy, me and Kat, they took the sofa bed up the stairs. It was a bitch carrying her sofa bed up the stairs. And... Gave them both 20 bucks. She had her sofa bed moved. And when she had to move it out, she and Patty got some guy to help him move it down. He practically moved it down by himself. I don't know how the hell he did it. I had two guys moving mine in. So that's the kind of people you got to deal with. That you offer money for a job. I mean, 20 bucks, that would buy him a six-pack of beer and something to eat. Or they could feed their kids for the day, buy them, a, buy them something for dinner, feed their wife. They don't want the money. Because they're standing out there, they want to get a full time eight hour job. Well, that's fine, but you know, I figure you make 20 bucks for five minutes of work. How hard is it? Okay. You don't like him for Trump? Too bad. We need a strong leader in this country who fix the in, inside of the country and the outside of the country. And will stop jerks like this uh, pharmaceutical guy raise the cost of an anti-AIDS uh, drug from 10 bucks to a couple thousand. Well, they indicted his ass today for securities fraud. And he immediately resigned from this private company he was ahead of, and another guy came in. I hope they throw the book at that son of a bitch. All right, I'll be back in a minute with another video. But uh, we've had seven years of Obama, and if it weren't for Obama, we wouldn't have ISIS. If it weren't for Obama and the left fighting us in Iraq, we could have cleaned out that nest of vultures, and the Iraqi people would be safe, and Libya would still be run by Gaddafi, and there might not even be a Syrian civil war. Who knows? But the Middle East is a lot more stable than it is. 
Oh, yeah, I forgot. They overthrew, um, what was that guy's name, Sadat? Or, I got trouble with all these, all these uh, Middle Eastern names. I, I need a glossary or something. Maybe I need to type a list here. You know, Octobok, Tabok, Tabok, or whatever. Unpronounceable guys. Not a Fred or Ralph or a George or Sam or Irving or Seymour or uh, Bill and a bunch. I wonder what they call him for a short name. Do you, you know, if they call themselves Muhammad or Ahmed, it's like Med for short. I've always wondered about that. What do you? How do you get a nickname when a name's like they got? All right, I'm back. With another video in a minute. Have a great day. Stay warm. Oh yeah, Jerry. Thanks for the pictures. I appreciate it a lot. We're gonna. I'm gonna get them on. Get you to lower them and uh, make them smaller, and I'll put them on some T-shirts. Then every time I wear my t-shirt, I'll give a plug to MV and Gabcast. And I ought to put a hat and put a um, Bell Gab, Gab, Bell Gab, the, the uh, Gabcast podcast. Of course, what we really need to do, folks, and I got it, I'll put it in my uh, description area. You need to fund the guy from Pittsburgh. I need Bergcast. I have my own podcast where people can call in, my own radio show. And this time I'll do it right. Because when I'm in L.A., I'll talk to the company that was going to um, put on my radio show and get some advice. Maybe get some advice when they see George Norrie. How do you do a radio show? How do you do this equipment? How do you do this software? There's got to be somebody out there can help me do it. But I'm in a vacuum. It's hard to do stuff when you're on your own and no one gives you any help. Okay, see you later.